Hi, everyone. Uh, we welcome you to, I guess, our first podcast ever. We're a bit new in this, as you can tell. A bit of a uh, impromptu setup. Hi, Tam. <laughs> so um, my name is Gerasim Christoph, and I am basically a co-president of the Westminster Finance Society here with my friends Tim and Philip. Um, this is basically our first episode from the Westminster Finance Podcast. And yeah, we're here to basically discuss a bunch of topics regarding applications or, you know, the general concerns of people who are in the pipeline right now going into investment banking or asset management or, uh, you know, the general uh, industries that you might be interested in. And we're hoping to just have just basic discussions about these things as we're going into the you know, the bulk of companies opening applications. Um, and eventually we might just transition to this being a more of a commercial awareness discussion, you know, just talks in the mar on the markets. But for now, we're just going to keep it pretty, pretty basic and simple. But yeah, um, we have Philip and Tim here with me. Uh, just jump in whenever you feel like it, guys. You go ahead, Philip. <laughs> All right, sure. Um, yeah, this is a great introduction, uh, Garrison. Um, I mean, yeah, so my name is Philip Olofsson. Uh, uh, I'm a co-president alongside uh, alongside Garrison here and, and, and you know, uh, doing this together with Tim as well. Um, Tim being the chair, but he'll be able to, to cover that um, after me. But yeah, I mean, um, it's great. We, we initially got the idea is to, you know, shoot up a podcast because it's, it's fun to have a audio version of it and, and perhaps you know uh make make you guys um you know be able to to, to hear us and you know you know this is a great introduction and we want to be able to you know share share fun stories uh and you know tips and tricks uh, especially now as we are in in recruitment season uh if you are planning to go into uh finance it's, it's a bit of a uh you know, tough period or, 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 or a uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a period of struggle uh, and we're all going through it. So it's, a, you know, hopefully something great comes out of this and, and, you know, the, you guys who are listening to this might be able to pick up some, some, some good tips and advice for, for nailing those applications and, and landing those jobs as well. Well, yeah, um, also like, uh, tell, tell them a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, uh, what you're studying, why are you pursuing what you're pursuing, I guess. Just keep it like, I guess, a short, like one minute, just introduction. Imagine we're the CEO of some company and you're trying to pitch yourself to us. Just have a go at it. Yeah, I know. I mean, that, that's great. Putting me on the spot here, Garrison. I mean, I've been practicing my elevator pitch for a while here. Um, you know, I've, I've done a couple of interviews already. So, yeah, I mean, let's put it to test. But yeah, I'm, as I said, Philip, I'm, I'm, I'm born in, in Sweden originally, a, a tiny town outside of, uh, I mean, three hours uh, basically inland from Stockholm, which is the capital of Sweden, for you guys who don't know. Um, you know, um, a, tiny, a town, you know, the town where I'm bo born in is originally 9,000 9, people, as I said, and it's, it's a tiny city, not a lot of uh, opportunities if you want to make a, a serious career. Uh, but that's where I was brought up, thanks to my parents, uh, you know. Kept being, being from the area. Uh, thanks for that, guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, started out. I mean, I was, I've been you know playing playing sports, playing ice hockey uh, during 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 my studies back there, and and that was really serious serious about doing that that prof professionally. Sorry, um, but you know, my my original plans of doing that didn't really turn out what as you know how I expected them to be. So you know. I had to start looking looking into other other routes to to go, and you know I, w I was kind of attracted to to come over to London and study, uh, and more specifically, you know, finance. Uh, and yeah, I mean, somewhere along the way, I I pick up the interest of of you know um, uh, looking into uh, companies, corporates, and you know helping them out to you know. Uh, I guess, I guess, or I guess, advise them on, on, on deals and such. So I have, a, I'd say, I have a, uh, a large interest in investment banking, and that's kind of where I'm, where I'm aiming to to go into. But yeah, I'm not going to talk too much. Let's uh, <laughs> let's hear out from Tim. Uh, uh, yeah, Tim, go ahead, but like be, be a bit louder because I think your microphone is quite quiet. Yeah, no worries. I mean, I did set it to a more reasonable level. I don't know, is it alright like this? It's good. It's good. Like, I, I think people right. can hear you. So my name is Tim Solomon. Um, I'm the chairman of WFS. It's a pleasure to meet you if you don't know me by face yet. Um, 
I'm half Egyptian, half uh, German, but I grew up in Germany for most of my life, been in the UK for around seven, eight years now. And like these guys, <laughs> I am also trying to break into the industry of investment banking, uh, you know, m and deals, LBOs. This is my passion. <laughs> Uh, and that's also part of the reason why uh, myself and these two guys created the Society for Everybody to kind of uh, create a, you know, a network of like-minded people where you can thrive and motivate off each other. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm studying the uh, finance and business management course going into my final year now. Uh, 24 years old, so probably a bit older than some of you. Um, not any wiser, though. So, yeah. I don't know. Should I add anything else there? I don't know what you guess. No, I think it's, I think that's fine. Uh, I, I can. I guess I, I was the only one who didn't really give a little bit of background on myself. I'm the uh, the Eastern European white boy here. I guess um, originally from Bulgaria, moved to Germany when I was 16. So spent a lot of time from this guy's in this guy's home country for a while. Um, finished finished high school there. Did some some economics degree, at least two years of it. Some some college in Germany. Uh, enjoyed it. Uh, got me got me interested in finance. Uh, eventually was able to save up enough money so I can move to a larger financial hub. So it was either Frankfurt or London. Um, I'm sorry to all the Frankfurt and German people listening to this. I, I preferred London over you. I'm sorry. I don't, don't lynch me. I'm, I'm I really apologize for that. But uh, London it, it was, and then I ended up in. The University of Westminster, pretty central location, good alumni network, and yeah, I, I feel like it was a good decision uh, given my given my uh, situation. So um, ever since we started this uh, this investment this investment uh, excuse me this this finance society, and um, I think we're well on our way to just slowly progressing to becoming the largest one on the campus. We we hope so, you know, fingers crossed. Don't, don't want to jinx it. Um, but eventually, I, I see ourselves uh, being able to hopefully work with other universities as well. But uh, this is our first step, so to say, in that direction, putting ourselves out there. Hopefully, people like us. But yeah, guys, let's, like, I guess we can just uh, touch on a little bit of a general idea of like why we want to do this. Like, why are we? Why did we start a society? Basically, Tim kind of touched on it. Make a network of like well. Maybe. Well, how do you say it? like like-minded people in a sense? Um, but why didn't uh, let's say something like this in a, in your opinion exist for us before we joined us? Like, why would you say that um, we we felt the necessity to start this? Well, I think uh, this is a theme that we're going to touch on on several episodes, I'm sure. But it's the lack of continuity at Westminster when it comes to societies. As far as we know, there has been a different finance society almost every single year and zero continuity from the previous to the next, which obviously is just starting over every single time and really means that nothing gets done. Uh, is also an issue of motivation. You know, not, every, not everybody wants to put that much extra time into running a society, uh, providing you know internship guides and uh, CV workshops and mentorship schemes and all of this to people. Uh, it requires a lot of work, but that's why we're trying to build this strong team of engaged students around us, hopefully you included. <laughs> and uh... I guess you were saying that you were hoping that I would be the same. I take that as a personal offense, but thank you. Um, I was actually talking about the members, but yeah, sure, it's all about you guys. <laughs> well, um, you know, us investment This guy's the main character, everybody. Us, don't us, let's let's people, not be self-centric here. You know, I'm we're sorry, all about the members, that. guys. Come on. Um, hopefully, we will not be able to uh, take too much. Um, we're not going to be t touching too much on this, I guess. But, Philip, I want to hear your opinion on this as well, so we can just transition on to the next topic. We're trying to keep these yeah. short and simple so you don't kind of overwhelm me with... Uh, what we think on things so just just go out, go on to go just share your opinion yeah no definitely uh yeah i mean i mean as of the background of the society you mean that yeah um yeah um, yeah and you know uh initially tim over here brought the great idea of well initially you saw a a, a, a cool it wasn't like an episode or a series or yeah, some so youtube clip from the american documentary um talking about american colleges and specifically the societies at these colleges and one thing that they mentioned is that you know most business leaders in the u.s and most politicians in the u.s didn't just graduate from harvard or yale but were also part of a specific society which is how they gained the network that allowed them to progress to where they are 
And that's really what I wanted to build. You know, obviously it's difficult to do this when you do it from the beginning, but based on the experience we have so far and the feedback we're getting, uh, it should be, you know, it, it should be very much possible and should give students a huge advantage when it comes to internship applications and building a network of people at pretty much any company in the financial industry. You heard Definitely. it here first, guys. Yeah. We're going to be the next Go and Bones. So <laughs> be, be sure to join us if you want to be the next US president, for example. Um, <laughs> I guess yeah, this, is a, this, is, this is a good transition point because I guess we kind of touched on some of the difficulties we kind of face um, as a non-target school in a sense. Uh, when just not, not just basically about societies, but I guess there's a bit of a problem when we're trying to get in, in, in our applications for uh, you know just good and reputable companies such as Goldman or or Morgan Stanley, for 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 uh, for example. Um, so I guess a lot of us are already in the pipeline right now, um, trying to secure ourselves that 2022 summer analyst positions. Um, so I believe it's going to be nice to just you know talk a little bit about how um, each of us has been doing throughout the hiring process right now, where we are, like what are some issues that students face in general, not just people coming from non-targets or, you know, uh, universities that do not tend to be prioritized by uh, by campus recruiting. Um, just touch on that, maybe talk a little bit about um, just uh, how does it how does it benefit someone to be from uh, a target school, maybe how it benefits them to be from a non-target school because there are advantages and disadvantages uh, on both sides in a sense. So, yeah, I can just uh, get it, like, I guess Tim started the last one first, so Philip, if you can just yeah talk a little bit about yourself where you are in the pipeline um how you're recruiting um stuff like that uh, how what, what what are you concerned about for you you personally what are your observations yeah no definitely i mean i mean you know just just touching on of like you know the background to the society as well i mean the original thing is is getting yourself in, in, into the right environment and you know getting those i mean key tips uh, tips and tricks sorry uh and insights from your friends from your peers that has heard something from from a recruiter, let's say at a at, from Blackstone or or from from JP Morgan, and you know that could be the uh, the key factor to you actually landing that interview. So you know, getting yourself in, 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 into that environment is is you know really really essential. And I really feel like we have set ourselves into that you know great spot where you know we're built up you know not just great friendship uh, alongside you know the whole the whole committee but also you know starting to build build on that for the members as well um and you know just share that knowledge and pass on that uh those insights essentially to the, to the people um that are joining in so you know um and i feel like you know this is you know, i guess it's the the key thing to to why i have been able to you know keep the pace that i've that i've been able to do you know running around to all these different uh, you know, master classes and events. Uh, you know, shout out to SEO London for for arranging. You know, shout out to them. <laughs> definitely. I mean, they serve every. every Jang, word. if you're watching this, we love you. <laughs> we love you, Jang. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's all about putting yourself in, in that environment. I mean, uh, you know, getting getting together with people like with like these two dudes as well to to you know uh, you know light a fire up in each other's asses and, and you know get get things going. So. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've I've learned so much throughout just just the first year, not just from uni, but you know, recruitment from my peers, and that I've been able to or made me uh, been able to apply to to already a lot of firms, and um, I have had you know the the luck now to to you know start start uh, uh, actually interviewing as well, uh, and we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm I'm walking into my second second interview now with Morgan Stanley for their. Uh, 2020, 2022, sorry, uh, summer analyst position. Yeah, no, no jinxing it, please. But you know, uh, <laughs> I'm trying I'm to keep it serious. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll party when I get when I get to the uh, ACs, and and once I get in, I'm, you yeah, know, they've, uh, they've canceled the tombstone. They canceled the tombstone. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah, but you know um, that, that that's that's my current position and just my view of this stuff. But it will be great great to hear. You know, just. Uh, our our, our uh, beloved chairman's um, words on you know what we're trying to create here and where you're uh, currently at. Yeah, yeah, just just touch a little bit like yeah, how do you feel about where we're coming from and also as he mentioned, where where are you currently? Well, uh, so in that sense, I'll be 
brutally honest with you guys, you know, uh, I've had a very bad experience last summer with my internship applications. And in fact, I didn't land anything. Um, and obviously, as you guys can imagine, that's rather demotivating. Um, but over that time, I've in, instead done other things to increase my chances of landing something for next summer or landing a grad scheme. Uh, and that's really, I mean, the society has been integral to achieve that. So yeah, as I said, uh, last year didn't go too well. Um, I stepped up my game. You know, I, I spoke with people and that's been the biggest key. You know, I spoke with people. They told me what I need to do. They told me what I was doing wrong. A big part of that is to network, you know, being on LinkedIn, meeting people up uh, for coffee. You'd be surprised at how many people are down to meet you for a coffee. You know, they're just like you, they want to go out, talk to people. Daniel, that, that's about you here right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel, a <laughs> little shout out for you there. Yeah, I'll ask people out for coffee. It'll do wonders. Um, and yeah, just getting yourself out there, you know the chances of you landing something when you're just sat at home in front of your computer. I mean, if you're from Cambridge, sure, you know, your chances are good, but we aren't. So the advice I'll give you is to really focus on your networking. Uh, I mean, Garrison will attest <laughs> to how well it works. The guy literally, uh, I mean, Garrison, if you want to jump in here and give some of the uh, examples of how good networking can be, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I was planning on this being our third topic, uh, right. but we're kind of going into it a bit quicker. Uh, just before that, because um, I am going to keep it like short and simple on the topic of you know applications and stuff like that. Um, I did mention that I want to talk a little bit about like the advantages that you kind of gain from being from a non-target, I guess. Um, yeah. Of course, the, the, there are a lot of advantages from also being at a at a, at a really good, solid Russell Group University. Um, so first, first on the first on like I want to I want to touch on like. An universities such as ours so uh yeah you might not definitely get like this really good um recruitment on, on campus that uh, you would either be provide you would usually be provided uh from like your your uh, career center uh that some of the good uh, some of the more uh you know developed universities uh when it comes to finance specifically would have and um yeah that's a bit of a bummer of course it, it kind of it kind of makes it not that easy for you to break into an industry where if Information is generally a lot, like really fragmented, and you need to you know go to Wall Street Oasis, grab something from there, go into breaking to Wall Street and get grab something from there. Uh, talk to your friends left and right, and try to accumulate and you know have a succinct uh, like a good excuse me like a coherent idea on how do I, someone who has never had any previous uh, interaction with the financial world, my parents don't work in that area, no one from my family, indirect as well, has ever worked in finance. So like, what do I do? Like, how do I progress with that? And I believe that like in a certain sense, coming from a non-target university and having that, the drive to actually find that information uh, puts you on a uh, Oh, no, it gives you like an edge that some other people might not have, because um, I, I, I would say that in a certain sense, uh, you know, having everything delivered to you and provided to you on a platter doesn't make you uh, kind of say as driven as you would otherwise be. But of course, that isn't to say that just because you have uh, all of these good services delivered to you by your university, that that's a bad thing. No, it's it's incredibly beneficial to be studying at the LSE. We we know some incredible people from, from there. Like there are some of the smartest people I personally know. Uh, for example, Archie, if if you're kind of listening to this, uh, I, like that's people people like him that really also deserve to be in this industry. Um, and they did the work previously and were able to. Uh, go and study in such a prestigious university. So they very much well deserve to be able to use those services that their university provides. And um, yeah, some people, uh, for example, I myself wasn't able to attain a good university coming in from Germany uh, where I had to you know, be able to get like a undergrad, like, excuse me, like high school degree, barely knowing German. So that kind of puts me like at an, an even, like an unequal footing, like an even playing field. So yeah, I didn't end up getting a good university, but that doesn't, Change the fact that I met like incredibly cool people like Tim and Philip, and I was able to uh, be part of SEO London, which also has provided me a lot of um, you know very good resources. And you know that that kind of like generates like it's it's kind of a snowballing effect, right? Um, this this fact that you oh you were here um, and you weren't given these uh, these resources, but you go out went out there and found them uh, either through just own research and stuff or networking, as as as, as, as Tim mentioned, that this is like 
probably the most essential thing you can think of, um, which kind of go- leads us into our, our third topic on how exactly do you prepare for the application cycle? How do you how do you give a, how do you like uh, get ready for when applications open so that you are in the you know the best possible position to secure something, right? So you would do behavioral preparation about knowing your story, know who you are. Uh, you would have done a lot of reading on what's happening in the markets. You would be preparing your technical questions. So, you know, take me from uh, DCF or, uh, you know, how, what is networking capital? Uh, and these are really, really important things and they will definitely benefit you throughout the whole process. But um, in a general sense, I, I, I sincerely believe that networking is the holy grail of preparation. So, networking is the difference between uh, a, a you know a good career, someone who you know, is really good at his job, does does what he is asked to do, and you know delivers good services and uh, delivers a good product to their client. But someone who has networked is someone who's going to have like an extremely successful career because knowing people who work somewhere else. Let's say, I don't know, let's say you're working for Goldman, right? And you know someone who is working at another uh, you know, bank, uh, doesn't need to be an investment bank. This relationship that you probably started like 10, 15 years ago is going to generate business for the company once you reach a VP or MD. So that friend of yours, why would they do business with someone they don't know from another company? They would rather do business with the person they trust. So establishing these connections from an early age not only benefits you to just get a better idea of like, oh, I know what why people pick uh, UBS. Oh, I know uh, why I want to do investment banking because this person told me why they want to do investment banking. But you actually establish professional relationships with people that not only benefit you currently, but they will benefit you in the future and will also benefit your company in the future, depending on where you work, of course. Um, and, it, and additionally, it will benefit the person who has connected with you because they have invested their time in you, their resources, their effort, so that you can prosper yourself and then you could eventually return that favor to them. So um, definitely. I'm definitely yeah. rambling a lot right now, but uh, networking no, but this is, is good stuff. the most important thing that you can possibly prioritize. Totally. All of these guys here can you know, attest to it. Uh, very, very recently, we have had like a, a lot of nice conversations with people and each of them can, t- can you know, attest for their own experience in this. It's yeah, no. incredibly useful, but it's also the easiest of all of the things you need to do to prepare yourself. I mean, it's not, it's not just, I mean, all this that you, that you just covered is it, this probably, you know, the prime version of, you know, building a network and, you know, being out there talking to people, but, you know, let's take a step, a step back and, you know, the, 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 the best thing here for like incoming students and that, and, you know, um, and, and, you know, we just have them, or have yourself talking to people inside the industry will prevent you from, from not knowing what you're walking into, right? You're removing that barrier of, you know, uh, I mean, uh, you know, just strange, uh, strange expectations or, or a strange picture of, of the industry that you may have, may or may have, may not have been, uh, you know, sold uh, earlier on uh, or just heard of, you know, because finance is quite, I mean, it's a certain mystique of it, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people, we, you know, finance people throw around all these fancy words and, and you know, in the end, it's not that complicated if you, you actually set your mind to it and, and try to understand. So what I'm saying here is, you know, um, by talking to people, especially, I mean, not just people higher up, but also people that just walked in there, uh, walked into working in, in one of these, you know, grad roles somewhere, uh, at, at a you know investment bank, you know, just hearing that their version uh, of of uh, you know uh, how they walk through the recruitment process and how they're enjoying their work and you know how they're you know they they could leverage their different qualities uh, and actually land a job or or perhaps perhaps even you, you meet someone that that you know they hate, hates their job and doesn't like it at all and wants to get out of there and you you know you start realizing you know. Uh, Shit. I mean, there, there's more stuff than, than finance. I mean, we're not here to sell you, sell to you how that we, you should go into finance, but we're here to promote it certainly. And I mean, and and and, and I mean, hopefully we, we can attract people that that have that you know goal of coming into finance. But you know, you should be aware of you know there there's many other things out there. And um, yeah, I mean, 
uh, there, there there's many many other great way, ways or I mean things you, you can you can gain just from talking with people you know striking good relationships with them you know keeping in touch staying in touch but because you know let's say you you do not go into uh, like a, a you know a specific finance related role now like you know for for your uh, let's say summer internship or or your grad role after university that's not that's not preventing you from going into finance later on. Uh, I mean, some roles are, or some position is quite hard to, to you know, get into uh, straight. I mean, if you're coming from a different industry or, or a different uh, sort of firm, but of course, there, there's no like closed doors. And, and I mean, uh, you, it just makes, makes you be, uh, or enables you to be a, be a bit more uh, mobile as your career choices uh, by, by, you know, just knowing people and connecting with people. Um, so yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, you know, we're endorsing networking here and, um, and I mean, it's, it's, I feel like it's a smart, small term, but I always want to, you know, expand it to like talking to people, talk to people in different industries, industries, not just finance, just to make yourself sure that like, you know, okay, finance is the thing that I want to do that as well. Yeah, um, and, you know, I just, just echo that for sure. expand Absolutely. on that. Um, but yeah, uh, Tim, if you want to touch on that specific discussion about networking, uh, but I would also want to because well, I, I we've discussed enough networking. <laughs> no, I mean uh, if if you if you want to, <laughs> I guess yeah, we we're, we're kind of overwhelming people in a sense. Yeah, true. But um, I was just trying to pivot in the direction of like you know the actual topic is you know preparation. Like how do you how do you prepare for you know going into that in, like an in, in interview room and be like yeah this is my position and I'm going to get it. Um, how do you gain that confidence that you're going to ace your interview? What do you do to prepare for that? Because a lot of people feel like that there's so much information out there that it's just conflicting at some point. So like what do you do? Like how 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 do I know that I'm not wasting my time reading something that is not going to be beneficial to me? So how do you like uh, so how do you sift through, you know, bullshit in a sense, or like stupid articles on financial on the Financial Times that doesn't benefit you at all? Uh, how do you how do you how do you make sense of that? Like, what what has your experience been, and how have you prepared for this? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of useless information out there, that's for sure. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have anybody telling me what's useless and what's not. But uh, to touch on the most recent thing you brought up regarding news, because I think that's one of the first stages any finance student takes you know it's the easiest thing you can do download an app and start reading a couple articles uh our uni provides us with a free subscription to the financial times which i would absolutely exploit if i was you um and to make the content a little bit more relevant uh there are certain topics so you can you can create a profile um, of topics you want to hear about because there's a lot of you know chatter on there i mean sure knowing about politics is absolutely important um but it's not exactly, you know, what you should be spending the majority of your time reading about. Instead, you should be looking at things like, uh, you know, the hashtags like economy, mergers and acquisitions, uh, companies, financials. Um, there's a couple good, uh, like, well, I, I don't know what to call these. Uh, like, I just, I just want to shout out the comment section. Magazine titles. I just want to shout out the comment section on Financial Times. Look that. Look. <laughs> look into that stuff. It's good stuff in there. A lot of people <laughs> avoid it, but I, I recommend that shit. If you want big comedy, definitely go there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, aside from commercial awareness, like touching a little bit of behaviorals and like technicals, and then maybe like uh, how do you, what do what do you think would uh, what else would be important to prioritize when preparing? Well, uh, a big priority, and this is something I would get in as soon as possible because it takes the largest amount of time, is prepare yourself for the tough stuff, right? There's going to be a lot of technical questions coming at you during your application process, during your ACs, so your assessment centers. Uh, there are several case studies you have to do. Uh, there's several group uh, exercises that you're going to have to do, and you're going to have to display technical and behavioral knowledge throughout. So this is something uh, you can find a lot of information for on WSO. Uh, you know, I would start out very generic. Um, don't go too, too in depth with your technicals. Ask your lecturers, ask us what kind of topics you should be covering to begin with. Same with the behavioral stuff. So if you're not aware, behaviorals is essentially uh, how you would, they will ask you a situational question and they want to see how you would behave in your answer. So they, it's very important 
that they structure your answers in almost an unnatural way because it's not how, how you would structure your answer if I asked you that question, but they want to, you know, you need to hit specific keywords that they're looking for. And this is a general theme throughout anyways. In your CV, in your cover letter, throughout your entire application process, there's always keywords that you need to be hitting. You know, have an in-depth look at the job description and try and mirror that in your application and in how you present yourself. Yeah, Philip, sure. if you can just go into the technicals uh, so we can just close it off so people <laughs> yeah, don't have to no, sit I mean, for over I'd, 30 I'd, minutes in front of their monitors. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd <laughs> love, I'd love to you know, dig into all these technicals, but I, you know, I, I'd say that's not the originally not the most important thing. Of course, it's super important. It's a large part of it. You should know your technicals, as all people say and recruiters say. Uh, but you know, always, always remember that by walking into an interview, Either you know, it, you know, it could be a video interview that you're recording uh, for for their high for any bank's high review, but or, or or telephone interview or in person or Zoom interview, whatever it is. Always remember that like uh, the person who's gonna view it or listening to you or talking to you is gonna be judging. Well, uh, would I want to work with this person that I'm talking with or, or listening to? Um, and and you know, always always remember to be in yourselves, not not just like you know, stay true to yourselves, but um, and you know that that's that's like that should be always being the core of it because otherwise it will sound unnatural and so on. Of course, you should be practicing, like you know, practicing beforehand and know your story, know your stuff. Um, but that should be the core of it, and then and then expand. You know, you know, uh, you know, you should you should know your know your. Uh, I mean, at least at least have a broad idea of you know what different valuation techniques is is out there and and how these firms are are. Uh, working on ground level as well because that's the, the kind of stuff that you will be doing from from the start and they they expect you to have a have a knowledge of that um but as of like the, the specific like technical knowledge you know we can probably do do another episode episode talking about just technicals yeah uh, and just spend there's, like 30 a, minutes there's, on a, that. there's a bunch of the things to cover there uh no absolutely uh really good advice at the end uh be yourself have an interesting story and be fun to work with. Uh, because especially in IB, you'll be working 15 hours with other people and, and they don't want you to be boring. They want someone to have fun with, go for a pin afterwards, after work. And yeah, um, really good advice, especially uh, on, on that end. But um, I guess it's uh, time to come to a closure. This one has been uh, our first one. Hopefully, we didn't bore you too much or we didn't overwhelm you. Hopefully, the quality was at least relatively good. But um, to end, I would just like to thank you for like you know watching us. Uh, we'll try and keep you uh, updated. Or listening, if they're listening to you. If you're listening, yeah, sorry. Yeah, if you're listening as well, try to keep you updated as much as possible on everything. And yeah, um, I would uh, appreciate if you can just follow us on LinkedIn and Spotify. And yeah, we look forward to um, doing this more. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.